Hey there designers! In this video I'm going to show you how to make a user complete several click to reveal interactions before being allowed to move on to the next slide. So there's a lot of opinions about out there about learner control, uh, if learners should have more control over moving through the storyline project or if they should be forced to do things through it you know your audience best you know if you want to do this or not but if you do want to force users to complete a couple of interactions before moving on this is the video for you so what i did here is i actually already built out this project i'm using storyline on my mac via parallels and it's moving a little slow today so I went ahead and set up this project, but I'll show you what I did. First off, I'll show you what the result is. The idea is that I want my user to visit each of these characters before a door will appear. I didn't fully build out this project, it's a little bare bones, but I want them to click on Carmen San Diego. I want them to click on Countess Cleo. And once they visit both those characters, then the door will appear. They can click on that and escape <laughs> to the next slide, right? So doing this is a little more complicated than you think it would be. Um, there's always more than one way to set up any given interaction in Storyline. There's more elegant ways, there's less elegant ways. The way I did this is probably less elegant it's fine, it gets the job done, it's fairly straightforward. And interestingly, trigger order comes into play here. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let me give you a quick tour of this slide. So this is all happening on one slide in Storyline. I've got the base layer, which is now called Return Here <laughs> in Storyline. They changed the name of that recently. It used to be base layer, now it's Return Here, it's kind of funny. Um, I got a layer for Carmen and I got a layer for Countess Clear. The, these actually don't have anything on them other than triggers, but the idea is, is you could do a click to reveal interaction where you have some text or something appear on this layer. And of course, the nice thing about layers is that they default to hide other layers when they appear. So if Carmen has some dialogue up and then you click Countess Cleo, Carmen's layer is going to automatically hide and you'll only see Countess Cleo, so you won't have competing text on screen. So that's really important for a good user experience. And then the door lives on the base layer. So both of these characters have a state set up for visited so they'll gray out so the user knows they've been visited. The state for the door there's only one state for the door really, but the initial state is hidden, okay? So this is my base layer. I was really thorough and I named all my pictures and I named my layers. It's really helpful if you name everything in your project so that when you set up your triggers, it makes it a lot more clear how to set them up and how you can uh, you know, identify everything in your project. So I did create a layer for Carmen. I did create a layer for Countess Cleo. So. Starting on your base layer, what I did was, and once you've set up these triggers, you can copy and paste the triggers using these helpful things up here, and then just adjust as needed. I set it up so when you click on Carmen San Diego here, there is a variable that I set up already called Carmen that's going to be changed to value true. So Carmen is a true false variable. Let me show you that here and click on this little X in the parentheses there. Set up your variables. I actually didn't end up using that one. You can delete that one. Um, so Carmen is a true false variable. The default is false. You can see how much I used it. Same thing for Countess Cleo. So I got a, a variable for each of those two characters and they're initially false. So when you click on Carmen, it's gonna change to true. And then it's gonna show the layer Carmen when the user clicks Carmen. So they click Carmen and then, you know, the text or whatever you have on Carmen will appear. Uh, same thing for Countess Cleo. You click on Countess Cleo it'll change the variable to true when the user clicks Countess Cleo and that's gonna show the layer, okay? Now I mentioned trigger order earlier, it's actually really important which order your triggers are in. So at first I had this set up so that show layer was first and what that meant was it was showing the layer Carmen but it wasn't actually changing Carmen to true until after the fact so the door didn't appear when i expected it to appear is a whole thing so if you're having issues with your triggers double check your order this order doesn't really matter to like the user as far as um there's no delays or anything 
If you have an, a value that you need changed in your variable, have that happen first before the thing happens, before the interaction changes, okay? So have your variable change its value first and then show the layer. That's actually really important. Okay, so that happens. This layer is set up, it's all good. This base layer is all good. Now I've got one more variable on each of the layers, Carmen and Countess Cleo. It's just set state of door to normal. When timeline starts on this layer, if Carmen equals true and Countess Cleo equals true. So every time a layer opens, this trigger is going to run. Nothing will happen unless these things are true. Okay. And then I actually just, you can just copy this, bloop, copy, pop over the other layer, bloop, paste it here. And you just put the exact same trigger onto each layer. So every time a new layer opens, it's going to check to see if these things are true and then it'll change the door or not. Okay. So that is it. I'll show you what happens one more time. And then of course I got the door set up just, you know, for demo purposes, it'll jump to um, success uh, when the user clicks on it and the user can't leave the slide until that is set up. So let me show you again what happens. I'll walk through this whole thing. So you'll see, of course, door is hidden. It's going to be right here. It's not here yet. The only two things that are clickable are Carmen and Countess Cleo. When I click on Carmen, bloop, her variable changes in the background. Now we're on the layer Carmen, even though you can't see it. When I click on Countess Cleo, her variable is going to change, her layer is going to show, and also that door trigger is going to run and check to see if those variables are true or not. And if everything is true, then the door is going to appear just like that. And now the user can click on this and escape and move on to the next phase of their adventure. Uh, if you'd like to check out this project, I've got a link to it in Dropbox in the show notes. You're welcome to try it out and see what you think and um, see how it works for yourself. So if you reuse this, let me know in the comments. I hope this was helpful.